Granville and information about what practical information like what maps and Granville show as the location of mineral deposits brought in and also information about what would have happened in the old timeline in Japan is brought over. And the bottom line is that instead of the Shimabara rebellion going to occur, that the, they decide to use a traditional Japanese solution. Po political problems were dealt with with internal exile of various forms. They were going to take the problem and convert it into advantage. They would expel, allow the Japanese Christians who turned themselves in within a reasonable time to be allowed to establish a colony in California. <laughs> and they know about California because the encyclopedia volumes that they were given, essentially a couple of world book encyclopedia volumes, probably from an incomplete set, though we really don't know. Uh, well, if you look, there's a C to CH volume, and that was given to them because they, they figured, oh, they'd like to read about China, and it also has California in it. And so they have information about the New World, but it's very constrained information, and they this process begins. Um, and so after that, of course, the focus is on what happens in the New World as opposed to what's still happening in Japan, which I really have not looked at what the further effects are there. So basically, <coughs> you your people left Japan before my people got to India with the airship, right? W uh, well, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, we the, didn't get there the until first arrival of thirty six. Is um, thirty six is when we had the airship. We have the first Japanese <coughs> arriving in California in fall of 1634. Yeah, because it's just not practical to have the airship. Airship any sooner. How many can do it? How many total colonists? Well, bear in mind, when the, they beheaded, depending on who you ask, at Chimabara. But I, I'm, I know. Uh, somewhere between 25 and 40,000. Japanese. In the, you figure in the that the first area. shipment over somewhere in the order of 2,000. And in the San Francisco Bay Area in Northern California. I'm just talking about the first shipment no, of Japanese in total. Okay, and I'm asking where they end up. Monterey Bay Area. Monterey Bay. Yeah. It's too uh, hard to find the Golden Gate, right? Okay. Uh, from where how unless many you know where that. Hold on, how many ships were in that cell fleet? Um, I figured it, but I don't remember the number. It was enough so that they would need to have uh, use of uh, hulls that were non-Japanese. They would need to be hiring Dutch and Japanese and ships, for the, uh, Dutch and Chinese ships to do the transport because the number of large ships that they had in Japan was not that many. They used them in the rice trade and a few other things, but and you had some of these red seals red seal ships that were used for trading with Southeast Asia, but you didn't have a really large number. The in terms of the estimates, there's um, um, some information I had from for example, from Spain as to what was the allowed number of passengers per hundred tons of Cargo. formal burden rating of the ship for ships that were allowed to travel um, to the New World. What, where did you have that number? I'm just curious. Where did you have that? How many? Uh, I don't remember the number anymore because I looked at it so long ago. I. 
Uh, so I cannot answer that question, but I have the number somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Wouldn't the Japanese be interested in, in locking up the Hawaiian Islands? Are they not aware of They're hard Pearl to Harbor, find. Potential for Pearl Harbor. At, well, at, at the, as of 1634, the Japanese would, uh, at, as of when they first planned this, the Japanese would not have been aware of the Hawaiian Islands. The Dutch almost certainly are, because they would have had access to maps earlier, and there was enough time from when you know, the Dutch were in contact for that to happen. No, they, you know, they didn't the have Dutch, the age. The Dutch like would have complete copies of the whole encyclopedia. Of, of, of several prime encyclopedias. Yeah. But yeah. the route you yeah. had your fleet tape doesn't but, go anywhere near Hawaii. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that, if, so if, this, this Hawaii has no part in the series yet. No. Yeah, I, I have had some plans for Hawaii, but they would not come into play till after this anthology. If you look at the reason, what you've got in terms of the, I, if you look at both winds and currents, the, the look for example at the route that the Manila Acapulco <coughs> Galleons went. They, coming from Manila, they took advantage of the westerlies mm -hmm. and uh, the Kershi Current. So they're coming up from the Philippines, they go up, they cut over, they make their landfall usually around the Baja California, but sometimes further north. And then they come down the coast following the California current to Alcapulco. Coming from Alcapulco, they're coming out taking advantage of the northeast trade winds. And that brings them across around the, where Guam is, they keep going up, and then they work their way up into the Philippine Archipelago. The northern stretch of that is substantially north of Hawaii, and the southern leg going very much so south, all the Aleutians very much the south. Coast. So they don't really see the Hawaiian Islands on that route at all, and that route is a fairly standardized one. The current corresponding, yeah. and the currents match what's called the North Pacific Gyre. Gyre, Gyre. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, G Y R E. Gyre. And, Gyre. and um, so that is the pattern. Hawaii came into play while there were probably shipwrecks that brought Europeans there, although that's one of the things that's subject to great debate. The, it came into play in the 19th century as a stopover for the fur trade. They would come, they would reprovision there, and they would head on to China. And the whalers. And the whalers. Uh, but the, right now there's not significant contact between the, rep, the European world and Hawaii, certainly the Polynesians have some knowledge of, of it. Uh, there was trade between Hawaii and the Society Islands, for example, yeah. on a very on an occasional basis. Outrigger by outrigger. Outrigger by outrigger. I mean, you were not talking about high volume. There were no, yeah, no fleets. Right? Certainly, it's there on the map, and sooner or later, somebody is going to decide to look into it. Um, uh, when they realized that Hawaii is where most of the whales are in the mid-Pacific, that's when they're going to that's when they're going to figure it out. Well, but that, yeah, that, that's potential advantage, but you'd have to weigh that against Empire. the transport of the, the, mm -hmm. the, the whale oil from there. Is it worth it to do that? Um, no, cattle ranching, your, that's why you go to Cap Hawaii. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> no, you, you're exactly right. You Big out the park of ranch. Set up timeshares. What's the situation with the Maori at this point? I you yes. have the Hawaiians, well, hold the question. The Hawaiians were already outrigging to the Oregon coast. Yeah, by this time. they were. 
Polynesians yes. are well, world class there's, navigators. Yeah, there's yes. a lot of evidence that Polynesians were doing open ocean navigation. Indian tribes of the Pacific Northwest claim Hawaiian ancestry and they ran a DNA study in their right. Well, the trouble is that the, 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 the museum people on Vancouver Island that I spoke to were saying, no, 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 no. Oh, Vancouver. They're Canadians. Yeah. Well, I, I haven't spoken to anyone, nor we'll talk about that separately. I, I, the... Talk to the people of the Smithsonian. They've done the study. Ivory, you're about to be inundated to emails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know how Virginia works. You know, it's, 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 it's over. Concede the point. I was thankfully, yeah. thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, the Polynesians didn't write like any books. <laughs> That's the important thing. That so there's no more thousand page volumes from yeah, the well, Polynesians. Right. <laughs> All right, we're not yet at the point to go back to this troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> we're not yet dealing with Hawaii. However, this one settles out, and, and I don't have a. I don't have a there pony. are so many writers, and we can only I don't have a pony in this race, words. but I actually well, more writers that. I personally find it charming. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would be delighted to bring the Maori into the series as soon as possible, and I'll tell you why. I was in New Zealand four years ago. I didn't know much about the Maori when I got there. I don't know of any. Indigenous <coughs> culture group, culture group, anywhere else in the world, when your kids arrived, who took to gunpowder warfare with such <laughs> abandon and skill as the Maori. Yeah. I mean, race relations in New Zealand are actually kind of interesting. They're not bad, and the reason is because, as one white New Zealander said to me, nobody here hunted the Maoris for sport the way they Maoris sacked the capital of New Zealand three times, uh, <coughs> and the ones who survived hid out in the church, and the Maoris said, well, okay, they're in the church, we'll respect that. They weren't themselves Christians, so they sort of agree. Um, but they, had, they just took the most... <coughs> I studied African history. The Zulus were certainly a ferocious tribe, but they never adopted, you know. They still, yeah, shields and spears. Shields and American Indians, you know, they all would pick up gun, guns, but they, none of them would really incorporate one. The Maoris, Jesus God, they had been in trench warfare before World War One. I. I mean, it's really amazing what they did. So it would be an interesting culture to bring into the, what we think of as the modern world Early. earlier, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of potential there early. It's really fascinating. That's Gary. Somebody just got to figure out a plausible way to do it. But um, anyway, no, Maori's haven't appeared yet, but I'd be very happy to do it. Got another one for you. Uh, Look up Lautaro in Chile. The mosquitoes down in Nicaragua also took very quickly to uh, mm -hmm. guns, but they weren't doing it independently. They formed a uh, the formal the alliance with the British yeah. and um, yeah. uh, went on British holes. Yeah. And I don't want armed mosquitoes, the, like, the unarmed ones. I guess <laughs> we'll have to talk about it separately, Virginia. But it's a matter of there was, a tr during the fur trade years, there was a lot of use of Hawaiians as sailors on the fur trading ships. And so separating, you can find it in the modern DNA, but the question is when the Hawaiians went, if you don't have the actual archaeological evidence to show they were there in 1600 or 1700 as opposed to... I am putting a stop to that. <laughs> 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 I know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 